Looks like we got some fox tracks down here running around or maybe someone letting their dog run who knows but here's what I'm looking at here if I knew the ice was thicker I'd be out there spinning on a dime like I did back over there where I did the little opening sequence Brody's was back around that corner hold on don't need to be all zoomed out let me zoom back in here. All right. Hey, it's Fred in Alaska. Thanks for joining me today. Got out here on the old 850 there. The beast of burden. So, what I wanted to share with you today, outside of this pristine beauty. Holy crap, man. I mean, look at that. It's just... Goodness, goodness, goodness. Uh, the twisted tree is back down over there the one in some of the opening videos you see it all twisted and forced between a couple birch I'm about I don't know a few hundred yards from that um, what I wanted to share with you today comes from Julius now Julius this was approximately uh, seven years ago he was on a snow machine ride and what ended up happening is, is he's cruising along, and this actually happened to me back in the 90s, but as he was going over these little bumps and little boondock areas, like, he accidentally hit his kill switch, and the machine just instantly died. So, he's stuck. He was with two of his buddies, and as, sorry, it's just dead quiet here, so I'm constantly looking around. You see anything, yell, warn me. But, uh. 
all the bears should be sleeping but anyway so he, he kills this snow machine accidentally and it's just getting into uh, dusk ish uh, very similar to what I'm at now right now it is about an hour before sunset and it was probably a little further along than that when uh, this happened to him so he hits the kill switch and this particular area is north of me uh, north of Sutton and the train is very similar very similar to what you got here you got a mix of birch you know you got some alders and willows and whatnot and black spruce and pine and you know that birch obviously but uh, he was on a real confined part of the trail when he hit his kill switch and he said he sat there for a minute and he can hear his buddies off in the distance and he heard them and knew that eventually they were going to come down this trail and when he didn't uh, meet up with them at the meetup place which he heard them make it to and kill their machines and kind of waiting for him he knew they'd be coming back so he wasn't overly stressed he was just kind of piddling around he popped his cowling was looking around and he decided uh, you know he had about a quarter mile of trail before it opened up and he'd be able to see his friends off in the distance and so he figured he'd do that so in essence he starts walking away from his snow machine or well literally not in essence but he literally started walking away from his snow machine and he said he was about 60 feet away and it was a pretty straight stretch and all of a sudden off to his left he heard movement in the brush so imagine 30 40 feet you hear movement back over here and it's just moving and so he stops and he's watching and he figures it's a moose you know he must have spooked a moose coming through you know hitting the little slalom area and uh, so he stood there he didn't want to get trampled you know moose will kill you uh, they fight brown bears so they're sure as hell ain't scared of your ass so he's watching it and so he kind of stops and he's waiting and all of a sudden he he sees it coming towards the trail that he's on and he said it was about 40 feet away ish so let me get a little closer up here and I'll, I'll point out something that's a better reference for about 40 feet the camera doesn't give a very good perspective so roughly right where that whitest birch is right there all of a sudden this thing is standing there and it's looking right back at him right so he stops it takes him a minute to put together what he's seeing because it's not making sense in his mind's eye and his words were holy fuck what are you and this thing just started swaying back and forth right he said as it started swaying he f had an instant uh, felt like his heart was going to beat out of his chest and he knew immediately he was not safe and i asked him well you know was it acting aggressive he said no it wasn't making a noise it was its posture the way it was standing and the way it was looking at him he said it was all dark uh, almost pitch black but not quite kind of grizzled looking along the chest and the shoulders and its face was all black and he could see the the daylight twinkle in its eye and he said the eyes looked black um, he said it was approximately nine foot tall maybe a little taller the the snow was pretty deep and you know it could have been you know standing in two feet of snow and it could have you know easily been 11 foot he it, he was in a panic he said what he did was he backed away <laughs> he, it was about 60 ish feet from his machine he gets over to his machine he said he came around the front of it and he squatted down looking over the cowling back at it so if you imagine you're, you're just kind of you're just kind of down low peeking back and, and I get it you want to put something between you and at that moment off in the distance he hears his friend's snow machine start up right and this thing is in clear view of him he can see it it's you know now you know almost a hundred feet away but it's still swaying and it's it started moving towards him right and as soon as it started moving towards him in the tree line right next to the trail if you can imagine something big and dark just creeping along he said it was moving silently and immediately tears were coming out of his eyes and he started praying now Julius said he's a heathen he never prayed before in his life and I, I understand that I've been in those shoes but he said as soon as he started praying 
he wasn't praying, oh God, help me from this, you know, Jesus, please help me from this monster. He's saying, please, Jesus, let my friends come. And in that moment, as soon as he said, you know, verbalized, Jesus, please help me, because he's saying the prayer out loud, he squatted down in front of his machine, scared to death. He heard this thing let out a scream. And this thing immediately took off, and it was going straight in the direction of his buddies. And, you know, he didn't put two and two together at the moment. He he just thought the snow machine sound scared this thing off. Uh, he said later, it was a couple years later, he realized it was the prayer that ran this thing off. Because there was no, I mean, his friends were still pfft, almost a mile away, you know. And, you know, the reason he heard the snow machines is they were in the wide open. And he could, you, I mean, a two-stroke 800, you're going to hear that thing screaming from a good ways away. But he figured it was the snow machines. Well, a little while later, sure enough, his friends came down that particular trail. And they see him there, and he still knelt down in front of his machine, just relieved that someone else is there. He was unarmed. Uh, he had <coughs> had nothing. His friend that was with him, he had, a, I believe, a, some kind of rifle with him, a 270 or something, um, just in case a moose tried to trample him. Well... As his friends show up and pull up, they're like, hey, what happened? You know, and they're, they were a little jovial. And he, he was fighting for the words to share, right? Uh, he didn't know what to say. He, was, he had a frog in his throat. Uh, he had tears still streaming. And he just said, thank God you guys are here. And they were like, his two buddies were like, you'll never guess. We just saw some dude running through the trees fast as shit. And he said, that's, no, that's not a guy. And they saw the look on his face and instantly got concerned because these really good friends of his, known him since junior high type shit, you know, for like 15 years they've known each other. And his friends were like, hey, are you okay? What happened? And he said, that, that person you saw is actually like 9 to 11 feet tall. And it was Bigfoot. And they were like, the hell you say? You know, they, they were thrown off. But they saw this thing running through the trees and just assumed it was some dude because they were flying by on snow machine. It was just something in passing you know uh they kind of wrote it off as you know some guy in a fur coat or something but then it dawned on them they started thinking well it was pretty damn big come to think of it you know so they they didn't give him a hard time or anything like that and uh julius was shaking like a leaf he didn't smoke cigarettes but one of his buddies did and he he smoked one of his friend's cigarettes just panic stricken uh his buddies tried to calm him down uh they gave him a little something to sip on warm up his belly a little bit and uh his his buddy that was first in line that came in uh we'll just call him t t went over and was looking at his machine and within moments saw that he hit the kill switch popped it fired it right up and what a relief you know and so they talked for a minute julius smoked a cigarette uh still shaking like hell and they gave him a few minutes and a couple more sips to calm down so he can actually ride. Because uh, he was shaking like really hard, like he was hypothermic. But he wasn't. He, he was just so traumatized by it. Um, I, I want to thank Julius. They, they didn't see anything else on the way out. They immediately left the area. And he hasn't ridden in that area since. Uh, this is approximately seven years ago. Uh, I'll just say between... Sutton and Eureka and we'll leave it at that because um, he doesn't want anyone to potentially Go back in there and you know get themselves in a pickle so to speak, but I want to thank him for sharing also I'm still waiting on squatch bait uh, to get done with uh, Miss Carol's video clips from the blink camera <laughs> He's uh, he went snowshoeing uh, Sunday, like 4.6 miles in snowshoes, man. Glutton for punishment, that guy. You wouldn't catch me doing that shit unless my life depended on it. But, uh, we'll be getting Miss Carol's update here real soon. He's just got to compile the blink footage, the most compelling stuff, because I had already showcased the orb and all that. There's other stuff going on. Um, things happen on the house. Just crazy stuff for Miss Carol. But, uh, we'll, we'll get to that here very soon. I want to thank you guys for joining me, and the sun is setting, and I don't want to be out here when the sun goes down all the way. Um, it's damn beautiful, though. Damn beautiful. I'm going to, I'll zoom in on this again. Oh, look, see, we're already losing sunlight.
already losing the sunlight it's all right it happens pretty soon we'll have very very little daylight during the day uh hatcher pass proper is back around the corner that way man beautiful out here and just quiet as shit i don't like it this quiet there should be some kind of songbirds chickadees or something floating around Anyway, thanks for joining me. We'll catch you guys soon. On the way out of here, I'm going to give you guys a little view of the trail. Enjoy. Uh, shouldn't get motion sickness, but if you do, you could, you know, stop here or whatever. Otherwise, we'll get going here. We'll catch you guys on the next video.